This is the code that enables Demon's Souls to run at 60 frames per second. It's kind of intimidating. By the end of the video I'll explain how it works, but let's start off with something that is easier to fit on the screen. And even though I'm mostly going to be talking about PlayStation 3 framerate patches in this video, we won't be talking about any complex SIMD instructions, so we're not going to need any SPU manuals this time. Anyways, to keep things simple, let's start off by looking at some higher level code. This code is implementing something known as an idle loop. When a game finishes a frame, but still has some time before the next frame can be worked on, this is the kind of code a game might use. Note that I'm using Go2 here. This is likely not how the game developers wrote their code, but the compiler likes to arrange things to be more friendly to the CPU. Since this is closer to what the resulting assembly looks like, I wrote this example using Go2. On the first iteration of this loop, the code will check the system time and exit if it's time to start the next frame. If it's not yet time to start the next frame, the code will go back to the top of the loop and sleep the current thread. Once the thread wakes up, it will check the system time again and repeat this process until it's time to start the next frame. So in theory, if we can find where this code is in our game, and patch the code such that the loop always exits regardless of what the current system time is, we should be able to unlock the frame rate. Is it really that simple though? I'm going to be using the game Folklore as an example here. Unpatched, the game runs at around 30 FPS. Since I'm pretty sure that the game will be spending a lot of time inside the idle loop in this scene, let's open up RPCS3's debugger and take a look at the main thread. Before we even pause the thread, this looks promising. Over here we see a backwards branch with the branch less or equals than instruction. This branch lands back here, on the syscall instruction, so that's our loop. The syscall is a special instruction that hands control over to the PlayStation 3 operating system, and the operating system looks at the current register to determine which function to execute. Since register 11 has a value of hex 8d set, the PlayStation 3 operating system will execute the sysTimeUsleep function. The first argument for syscalls is held in register 3, so since register 3 is set to hex 2710, the thread will sleep for 10,000 microseconds, or 10 milliseconds. Sandwiched up there is a BL, or branch and set link instruction. This instruction will branch to a given address, and put the current address in the link register. This instruction is intended to be used for function calls. Branch to a piece of code, then using the branch to link register instruction to return back to the code you were executing earlier. Let's take a look at the function called by this specific BL instruction. Right away, we see the MFTB instruction, which is really good news. This instruction reads from a timer inside the CPU and places that value in a register. This timer ticks at around 80 MHz, so to convert this timer to something useful like seconds, the game has to perform a bunch of math on the timer first, which is what the code below this MFTB instruction is doing. Let's take a look back at our suspected idle loop again. The function call left something in register 3, and the game is comparing the time value from our function with a constant, and stores the result in condition register 7. So if it's not yet time to exit the loop, we branch back to the system call instruction and start the loop all over again. So, in theory, if we can patch the game such that the branch target is never taken, then the game will run without a framerate cap. We can accomplish this by patching in the NOP instruction, an instruction that quite literally does nothing. Let's try it. Well hey, it really is that simple. Unfortunately, as you can see, the cloth physics kind of go haywire once the game goes above around 50 frames per second. Fortunately, the gameplay itself seems to work perfectly fine at high frame rates. The frame rate in this game is so high that I'm actually bottlenecked by my GPU's performance, which is pretty unusual for an emulator. If I reduce the resolution back down to the original PlayStation 3 resolution, the game runs even faster still, which is pretty insane when you consider that the title ran at just 30 frames per second on the original hardware. The reason why this game in particular is able to run so fast is likely due to it being an early PlayStation 3 title which doesn't make good use of the PlayStation 3's SPUs. Let's take a look at another game I created a framerate patch for, Drakengard 3. I've patched out the game's idle loop, but the game is still running at 30 frames per second. Why? Well, the game uses two different methods to cap framerate. On the PlayStation 3, many games use the V-blank signal to limit their framerate. When your television is finished drawing a frame, it will emit a V-blank signal to signify that it's finished with this frame and is preparing to draw the next image. Since the screen is drawing at 60Hz, a game can limit their framerate by waiting on either every V-blank signal to limit to 60 frames per second, or every second signal to limit to 30 frames per second. Since in RPCS3 the V-blank signal is emulated, we can actually set the rate at which the V-blank signal fires off to whatever we want. So once we set up both the patch and cranked up the V-blank rate, Drakengard 3 is able to run at high frame rates. But hey, most PlayStation 3 games don't actually use an idle loop to limit their frame rate. The most common method is through using the V-blank signal alone. This means that for most games on our PCS3, we can actually unlock the frame rate without the need of any patch. But just because we can unlock the frame rate doesn't mean that everything works fine. Demon's Souls is one title that can be unlocked through modifying the V-blank rate, however the game will run at double speed without a patch. So, 
This is what Demon Souls looks like when running with just a modified V blank rate without using the frame rate patch. As you can see, everything is running at double speed. How in the world can we rectify this? Well, we can start by making a guess. I looked through the binary for all values with a value of 1 divided by 30, in other words, 33.3 milliseconds, and replaced that with a value of 1 divided by 60, in other words, 16.6 .6 milliseconds. Incredibly enough, this guess was all I needed to get the game running at the proper speed. From there, I did a binary search until I could find the specific value that impacted the game's speed. But, that's not actually how the patch I showed off at the start of the video works. The patch I just described only needs one line to work, but the real patch is fairly long. How come? Well, the other patch only works properly if the game was running at full speed the whole time. This new patch can run at any given frame rate. Alright, there's no avoiding it any longer. I'm gonna have to try to describe how this works. We're actually pretty lucky here that I had the foresight to comment each patch address with the instruction mnemonic as well as the description of what the code is trying to accomplish. Anyways, this first part of the patch isn't written by me. This line from the author Jibbed sets the game in a mode where it'll run at 60 frames per second without modifying VBlank and disables the game's built-in frame skip feature. This next section is written by me. It adds a delta time feature to the game so that the game will run at the correct speed at any frame rate. In the original unpatched version of the game, the code at this address will load a value of 33.3 milliseconds into a register. Since we need to add a lot of code where the original game only had a single instruction, we need to jump to somewhere else where we have room to place our big block of code. That's the purpose of this first line. Next, we execute the MFTB instruction. This mnemonic stands for Move From Time Base. Essentially, the CPU has a clock which ticks at 80 MHz, or 80 million times per second. When this instruction is executed, the machine grabs the clock at that instant and places it inside our register. By doing some math with our time base value, we can get time in seconds relative since the machine has booted. But before we do all that math, we want to subtract the time base value from a previous frame's reading. This will give us our delta time value, we just now need to convert it to seconds, the format that the game engine is expecting. If you're wondering, there is actually a good reason as to why we calculate the delta value before converting to float in seconds. In the world of floating point, numbers become less accurate the further away from zero the number is. Since the time base value is a value of time since boot of the machine, the longer the machine is up, the less accurate converting that number to floating point would become over time. The patch for the original PC release of Dark Souls also ran into this issue. The frame limiter would become less accurate over time, and so the developer chose to use double precision floating point numbers in an update, which somewhat mitigates the issue. Anyways, since we have our delta, we now need to convert it to float and do some math on it to get time in seconds. Unfortunately, since PowerPC lacks any instruction to move from a general purpose register directly to a floating point register, we need to store a value to memory and then load it again from memory into our floating point register. Next, we convert it to a double precision floating point number and then round it to single precision. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really sure why I did this. I'm not sure if PowerPC lacks an instruction that converts integer to single precision floating point, or if I was just confused. I'm already lucky enough that I left good comments in this code to begin with. Anyways, next we load a pointer for some constants we're going to use later, then load them using that pointer. Finally, we divide our delta time number by a value which will convert time base into seconds, and then we compare that value to a constant. If our value is larger than that constant, then we instead move that constant into the correct position to be returned. If it isn't larger, then we branch past that code and return the time step to the original game's code. Why would we want to replace the time step with a constant though? Well, games like Demon's Souls were only ever tested with the original time step of 33.3 milliseconds. Minor issues manifest in the game when playing at 60 frames per second. If we go above 60 frames per second, even larger issues start to appear. At high enough frame rates, it becomes impossible to step up this tiny step. Similar to issues that manifest from small time steps at high frame rates, games may also have issues with large time steps due to low frame rates. If the game has a time step above 50 milliseconds, or is running below 20 FPS, I clamp the time step value down to 50 milliseconds. This is so that if the game is to stutter randomly, you won't have issues where your character is suddenly passing through walls, floors, or that kind of thing. I'm not sure if the game actually has these kinds of issues, but I've included this kind of code as a failsafe. I've also used this code to patch Nier. Nier is weird since it already had some sort of delta time code in the game, but it was causing issues at higher frame rates. I sort of got a headache trying to understand what was going wrong there. So I just essentially copied over the code I wrote for Demon Souls, and everything just started working fine. Weird. Oh, and I also ported the Demon Souls patch to Dark Souls as well. Why? Well, the PC version of the game was released on a later patch, which includes many balance changes to the game. If you want to play the original 1.0 version of the game at 60 frames per second, you can now do so through RPCS3. I should note that running Dark Souls at high frame rates requires a much stronger PC than it does for Demon Souls, since it uses the SPU Edge Geometry library, which makes scenes dense in geometry very difficult to run. Let's talk about PC games for a second. I haven't released any patches for unlocking framerate in PC games, but I still have a few tips that may be useful to you. 
And hey, if the assembly code so far has been too difficult to follow, you might want to start paying attention again, because this message should be doable even without any sort of programming background. This is the PC version of Devil May Cry 4. The game is incredibly easy to run at extreme frame rates, but uh, the game is locked to 120fps once you're actually in game. Only the benchmark mode runs with an unlocked frame rate, despite the setting being set to variable. Apparently, variable means 120 in the Capcom offices. With games that offer multiple frame rate caps, but no true uncapped options, there's usually a fairly simple way to unlock them, through Cheat Engine. First, let's set the frame rate cap to 60, then search for values of floating point 60 with Cheat Engine. Next, we're going to set the cap to a different value, and then search for that value instead. It's important that we select the next scan option. Now we'll select these two values and try editing them. Editing the first one doesn't work, but editing the second one uncaps the frame rate correctly. And there we go. Devil May Cry 4 is now running well beyond the game's original cap of 120 FPS. We can do something similar with other games. Monster Hunter World has a cap of 300 frames per second, but we can go beyond it with the same trick. Couldn't they have just included higher frame rate caps to begin with? I'd like to end this video with some advice for people looking to make their own patches. First, think like a game developer. If you wanted to limit frame rate in your game, how would you do it? How would you control game speed? Secondly, you should be using other people's work as reference. Are there any patches for different games on the same engine? How did other people manage to overcome similar problems? Additionally, for cases where you're having problems finding the code you're looking to patch, try to think of other ways to find what you're looking for. For instance, I found an idle loop in the debugger using RPCS3. How might I find that code without the debugger? Perhaps looking for usage of the MFTB instruction might prove useful. Maybe looking at the usage of the usleep syscall. I didn't have time to mention them in this video, but tools like Gidra and IDA can also be very useful. Ten years ago, framerate patches were a pretty rare thing. These days, they're common enough that people will talk about waiting for framerate patches before games are even emulated properly. I felt the same way, which is why I learned how to patch games myself. If you're interested, you can learn how to as well. I believe in you. Finally, the one last piece of wisdom I'd like to give out is that patching games is sometimes just difficult. Sometimes patching a game can take minutes, like with Folklore. Sometimes it might take hours, like with Demon Souls, and sometimes you might put a hundred hours into trying to patch something with absolutely nothing to show for it. And that's just how things go. Hey, you still paying attention? Anyways, like and subscribe for more. See ya, nerds.